Hey guys, this is Bill with notarycoach.com. Today I'm sharing with you uh, an example of the signing agent code of conduct uh, and practice policies that you might find in or with any type of signing company or title company that you might work with. Every company is going to have their own standards and uh, of, of conduct or a code of conduct in addition to that national code of conduct that you might see from the National Notary Association. The reason I wanted to share uh, kind of a direct example with you is I still get lots of questions uh, because one of the biggest fears for new signing agents is uh, the understanding and the comprehension of all the documents and the different types of loans that might be involved. And so there I wanted to kind of show you what the expectation truly is from the signing companies and I think what you'll find is that, uh, that it's, it gives you some comfort uh, and some motivation to move forward on this because there really is I mean, this, this role as a mobile notary and signing agent is awesome in the role that you get to play in a transaction. So I just want to go through these in this particular example there's about 13 different exam or 13 different codes of conduct and you're going to find these um, pretty much throughout any code of contact that you find in any type of company. Each company might have their own preferences and they might tweak it a little bit and have it in a different order. But I just wanted to give you this because you can pretty much count on this in any type of code of contact. Number one, this was big. Understand the assignment. It's your responsibility as a notary signing agent to go through uh, and ask the lender specific or the closing agent or the contracting company. It's your responsibility uh, to make sure that you understand what the assignment is, what the expectations are, um, and clarify what it is. So what that should do is give you some comfort, but it's okay to have a little bit of a dialogue with these people that are hiring you. It's okay to ask those clarifying questions. In fact, it's your prerogative, it's your imperative to do so. Number two, you're going to contact the borrower beforehand. This is, um, again, this can vary from company to company. Some signing companies don't want you to contact their borrowers at all unless you're lost or running late. Uh, some of them, like this one, does want you to contact them. And just make sure that the uh, required identification is included there, plus any stipulated documents and checks, if necessary, are going to be there. So it's essentially just a, a customer service confirmation call, text message, or email. Typically. Number three here says that you're going to examine the documents. This is one thing that I'm a huge advocate of is previewing the documents, receiving them ahead of time, sitting down with them, going through and making sure that you understand what the circumstances are, what the situation is, what type of loan, what type of application, you know, whatever it is. So you're kind of set and ready to have this conversation in this meeting with the clients. What it says here is that you want to be fully prepared, informed, and aware of what needs to be accomplished. I think that's a very professional way of handling that. On number four, it says that we're going to safeguard the documents. This is another huge one. You are responsible um, for those, the safekeeping of those documents, both before the signing and after. So let's read this one, because this is real important. The agent shall safeguard all documents entrusted to the agent and keep these documents under personal control or lock and key until conveying them to a reliable delivery service. To the extent that the agent is in possession of the documents received by electronic transmission from the closing agent, agent must prevent all unauthorized access to such files, documents, and systems, and destroy and delete all such files after returning the executed documents to the closing agent. The agent must not forward or re-deliver any documents to any other person or email address, or otherwise allow access to such documents by anyone other than the agent. So that just is really laying it out there that you are 100% responsible to keep those documents safe, secure, and private. Number five, avoid deception. I think this kind of goes without speaking, but the agent shall not be a knowing party to any illegal, deceptive, or harmful activity requested by a lender, closing agent, signing service, or the borrower. This is huge, guys, because um, if you find out some piece of information that might make a transaction illegal, for example, I'll just let you know the, the biggest form of mortgage fraud is somebody who buys a home telling the lender it's going to be a primary residence, but it's actually going to be a rental property. 
or something along those lines. If you find that kind of information out, or if the lender asks you to do something that's unscrupulous with a closing agent, uh, it's your responsibility, number one, as a notary public for the state in which you represent, but also according to all their policies and laws, it's your responsibility to remove yourself and bring that to the attention of the closing agent or the contracting company. Number six, this is the huge one, guys. This is what I really wanted to point out to you because so many new signing agents, they, they freak out. They get overwhelmed at how much information they have to learn and memorize, and they think that they have to understand all the ins and outs of how the mortgage industry works or how uh, the particular loan details or how to explain how fees work and annual percentage rate versus the, the note rate, all of that. This is huge. Right now, we are not advisors as your signing agents. So it says right here, number six, do not advise. The agent shall not advise the borrower about the loan, nor explain the terms of any document presented to the borrower. This is the beautiful part about this job. You're going to give a very brief description, and I actually teach uh, a script uh, to use on every single document as part of my Sign and Thrive Notary training course. Uh, but you can tweak it to yourself. Your, I, your goal is not to advise on quality of the loan, any of the terms, any of the numbers. You briefly describe what document they're signing and you make sure that it is signed, dated, and initialed correctly. That is your job as a mobile notary and signing agent. It's a beautiful thing. Number seven, provide information sources. This is another beautiful thing. As a signing agent, you're one of the most supported individuals in the whole process. So as you're going through and you're briefly describing the documents, if a borrower has questions that you cannot or should not answer, you're going to give them all access to anybody that they need to answer that question, whether it be the closing agent, the title or escrow company or attorney, or you're going to give them the lender contact information, which they probably already have, but you'll facilitate that so they can get the answers that they need in order to feel comfortable, comfortable moving on. Uh, number eight, this one kind of ties into it as well. Remain impartial. Again, we're not advising, we're not offering opinions on the quality of this loan or transaction or what makes sense. So you want to avoid um, including your opinions or just extra comments that might mislead or lead the, the borrower down the wrong road. As you're building relationships and conversation with people, this can be pretty difficult. So you want to stay conscientious of of your words and how it might be perceived on the other side of that table. Number nine, we're going to respect the borrower's privacy. Of course, you're going to you're going to keep all their documentation and paperwork private, but also you know you're not going to be you know if it's a small world sometimes, and you don't want to be saying, oh, um, I did your neighbor's refinance you know two months ago or two weeks ago. All of that is real personal private information. Uh, and even in those small world situations, you've got to choose your words very carefully. You do not want to disclose what other households are doing in the neighborhood or friends or whatever. Number 10, keep the contractor informed. This means that you're just going to let everybody involved in the party transaction know if there's anything that comes up uh, that might halt the signing, any major concerns, uh, anything that might uh, come to light at the signing that uh, affects what's going on. Just going to keep everybody in the loop. Number 11, we're going to observe deadlines. So this is a huge deal, guys. Um, you want to make sure that you stay on schedule. You want to get the documents returned uh, as per the instructions as soon as possible. This is one of those, uh, this will make you either a great signing agent or a terrible one. Uh, we have some signing agents in some states that sit on documents for days at a time until they send them back. And that, uh, that kills deals, and that will kill your business as well. So just do everything in a timely manner. Uh, time is always of the essence when you're in one of these real estate transactions. Always engender respect. You are a professional. You are a business in yourself, and you are representing other businesses. So it's very important that you um, stand up and show up that way. And then finally, number 13, you have no authorization to receive any funds except, as long as it's legal in your state, of course, um, the, the what they call negotiable instruments. So that's cash to close. So if a borrower is bringing cash to the table for a closing, 
as long as that check is made out to the appropriate closing party, that's going to be the title or escrow company or the attorney, you're good to go. You cannot accept cash. You cannot accept checks made out to you in these transactions, typically. And that's for this particular lender or closing agent or signing company. All right, guys, so that, that is just a real brief summary of some of the um, code of conduct for a typical signing company. Like I said, uh, you'll get a chance to review these anytime you start signing up with signing companies. However, I wanted you to see uh, what the expectation here is. So maybe that will break down some walls and you can dive into some training, get that training you need. Know that you do not have to know everything about this business to move forward. All right, good luck in your business, guys. My name is Bill with NotaryCoach.com. Have a great day.